something is changing in how we think about energy density in batteries and the, the change is already official it is confirmed they've done the tests CATL recently confirmed that their condensed battery that's literally what they call it uh, their battery platform achieves up to 500 watt hours per kilogram commonly referred to as the condensed battery with 400 watt hours but it's actually uh, per kilogram but it's now 500 actually that's not a rumor it's not a whisper it is definitely from a lab and it is validated at this point. So flight tested as well. And the company itself calls it verified is the word they use. So this is a big topic. So I want to go into it and we'll, you know, we'll all have a good understanding of what this uh, pretty mad technology is all about. This isn't some futuristic concept only for the next decade. It's a concrete technology that is available now basically and while it's currently targeted at aircraft or ev toll vehicles ev toll is like uh, little little vehicles like flying drones that you can sit in and uh, the implications ripple out into evs energy storage and supply chains as well hello folks thank you so much for joining me my name is ben alexander thank you very much for being here i want to walk you through what the condensed battery is where it came from and uh, what the numbers actually are what it means and this is just sort of like the pinnacle of batteries, hence the term, it's the golden battery. My chest is getting a lot better, I think, but uh, it's sort of going, going up and down with, with the, the pains and that sort of stuff. So hopefully my chest improves, but uh, at the minute going through a good pe period, even after having done lots of uh, housework and fixing of fences and that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's, it's looking quite good. So thank you as well to these people who are the channel members. So let's start at the beginning. CATL introduced this technology as part of their condensed battery lineup which is what they call it in 2023 they described it as using a biomimetic conductive material and a new ultra high safety separator to push energy density like far beyond traditional lithium ion boundaries so not 250 not 300 like nmc chemistry in a good quality long range ev but 500 that's what we're getting that's amazing so important importantly they have conducted test flights of prototypes uh, battery packs in an ev toll aircraft which means the battery isn't purely theoretical anymore and it has passed uh, airborne validation tests that gives it a credibility many solid state or exotic battery announcements just lack at this point i mean we did recently hear about uh a car going through Europe and I think they did was it a thousand kilometers or a thousand miles on a solid state battery and uh, yeah there are some things coming in with other technology but really other than this new golden battery it's all about sodium ion chemistry that is the big deal so the headline number up to 500 watt hours per kilogram that is the pack level energy density CATL stated for its highest performance configuration of the condensed battery so there are a few variations of this battery by the way it's not just one simple uh, chemistry there's a few variations of it so the phrasing they use is up to quote which means this is achievable in specific formats under ideal conditions it doesn't mean every pack will hit exactly 500 watt, watt hours per kilogram in the real world vehicles always have uh, trade-offs obviously but the fact that they published that number with test flights behind it means that it is official it's had flights validated and uh, they've been through all the tests so when you look through the the comprehensive list of tests actually some of them i had to really research what they were because they're not they don't really make sense to an ordinary to an ordinary reader a lay audience you know so it's a very they've been a lot of tests a lot of tests let's compare so most premium ev batteries today range 250 to 300 watt hours per kilogram in that region some lfp battery packs sit at 160 to 200 over 200 for the new byd blade 2 battery and also catl have a new version the fifth gen lfp chemistry which is 210 watt hours per kilogram that's pretty good the 500 watt hour per kilogram is roughly double what even the high end even uh, EV battery packs deliver now. But, and this is important as well, we need to be realistic about what that means and when. CATL are really clear. They tend to not overhype things and they don't, you know, fill the world with BS. They basically just say stuff when it's true, when it's happening, when it's confirmed, and they don't really hype stuff too much. The condensed battery is currently aimed at applications like EV tolls, electric aircraft, drones, and other high energy 
density users. So they are developing an automotive grade version as well for cars, but it's not going to be uh, going into standard passenger cars until that is all put through the, the test as well, basically. So when I say this could matter for EVs, it could, may not be for two or three or four years, they've got to do a lot of work and put this through more tests, that sort of stuff. For now, it's for aircrafts, basically. And uh, for aircraft, higher energy density batteries mean uh, lighter packs, more range, they can you know, garner more benefits uh, from having the batteries on board the aeroplanes, that sort of stuff. Less weight penalty, which is obviously um, important for an aeroplane, and improved safety margins, all of which make electric aviation practical or more practical. What about cost? CATL have not published a fully detailed cost per kilowatt hour for the condensed battery but we do know some stuff. What they've said is that by leveraging advanced materials and manufacturing, so it's a bit of a no-nonsense, they're not trying to be super stingy, they expect cost reductions across the board, but it is a very expensive battery to make, incredibly expensive, particularly for uh, high performance use cases. There is, the intention here is to make a good quality battery that can do some stuff to deliver a lot. In their public statements, they've also tied this platform with their broader goal of reducing battery cost per kilowatt hour across chemistries. So I can't safely quote a specific kilowatt hour, dollar per kilowatt hour target for this battery without really uh, risk of misstatement. So I'd, I'd rather not bother, but it's probably hundreds of dollars basically, which is not great because LFP chemistry at the minute, uh, big companies are paying 55 to 60 when they buy large amounts of them. And uh, the new sodium ion Naxtra cells should be able to get that down in the next two or three years to $19 per uh, kilowatt hour of storage. So the key point is when energy density doubles, you don't need twice the materials to get the same range. That opens the door to cost advantage and uh, lighter structure, fewer cells, simpler cooling systems. For aircraft where weight is critical, that means arguably more than just the dollars. That is a big deal, isn't it? So what about timelines? CATL say the technology is already flight validated, obviously, so passengers, uh, for passenger cars, their roadmap indicates that automotive grade condensed battery versions may come after their mainstream chemistries like LFP and sodium iron. And, have, and they've got to mature in the market is one thing they did say as well. And in other words, we'll see sodium iron and higher density uh, LFP chemistry across the board soon. And then we'll get those in the cars. The condensed battery for cars is a bit further down the line after that, but not indefinitely far, not, you know, not six years or something like that. So for now, the jump is happening in aviation and heavy duty. When a battery hits 500 watt hours per kilogram and becomes production viable, and it's not overly expensive, and obviously the weight and the cost equations change dramatically, for an electric vehicle, you could get the same range with a lighter pack. For aviation, you might financially crush the threshold where electric propulsion becomes truly competitive with fossil fuel equivalents on longer routes for energy storage as well, for your house and that sort of stuff, or grid storage. You could store more energy in less space, maybe at lower cost, with any luck. It changes the economics of everything. So to be, if we're gonna keep it grounded, we're not about to replace every EV battery with a 500 watt hour per kilogram pack uh, in the next 12 months. That's just not happening. Scaling, safety certification, manufacturing ramp up, uh, people are getting a better understanding, AI is kicking in for research and, and testing models, cost of new materials, all of that takes a lot of time. I mean, not so much AI, AI is really quick. But uh, yeah, what is clear is that CATL statement shows that the next frontier in batteries isn't uh, some far off dream. It is now validated, it is, it is happening, there's a few things just over there, just over the other end of the field, basically. So the question is when and where it shows up. What do you think? There's a lot to chew on on this one, isn't there? So I believe that we will see the condensed technology first in niche applications like high-end EVs or, or aviation, maybe special purpose vehicles in the next two or three years, I should imagine. Then as manufacturing costs come down and automotive safety certification is completed, this density uh, could migrate down to mainstream EVs and energy storage by 2030. And when that happens, I think we'll look back and realize that the baseline density for 
even an affordable EV has shifted up. I think it's going to go 250, 300, that sort of thing for cheap EVs. And before I finish up, just a quick note. Thank you again to everyone who's watching, even if you're not a member, even if you, uh, you, you're one of the, I think there's every now and then, most of my videos get 99, 98 or 100% likes, which I think is pretty good. But every now and then, and sometimes it's 100, actually, maybe at least half the time, it's just 100% likes. But every now and then it's a down. And if you're one of those people, thank you for at least watching. Yeah, the support genuinely helps me keep going and doing this every day. So thank you very much. And uh, it obviously takes quite a lot of time to validate and source real data, fact check things two and three times sometimes. And if you'd like to join, you can join on Patreon, buy me a coffee, links are in the description, uh, also YouTube members, and there's no pressure at all. I'm just grateful for whichever support, uh, whichever way you support. You can even join for free if you just want to be a part of it, but you don't have any money or you don't want to pay any money. That's all right. Go on Patreon for the free tier. What do you think? Do you believe 500 watt hour per kilogram uh, is credible, a credible milestone, an important one? Or if it is, how soon do you think it will show up in your car or in your neighbor's car, basically, or in an aircraft. Please feel free to put have, have a little rent in the comments. It doesn't matter. And uh, I read the comments, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video.